Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we are back with our typical bi-weekly wrestling news, and we have our wrestling expert, Jacob Mason, with us. How are you doing today, sir? I'm fantastic, buddy. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's finally good to have one of our normal wrestling shows. We're finally out of that post-WrestleMania. I know last episode, we really uh, went to town on that women's top 50 list and the releases so now we have a a normal show but then especially wwe they never fail us and then giving us the not normal so we're not even gonna wait we're just gonna hop right into the main question in the wrestling world backlash take up what the hell were zombies doing at backlash um yeah no one no one knows uh besides dave batista still having pull somehow with the company Mm-hmm. Cause I, the I sent you a meme that said I uh, had Vince McMahon saying like we feel like your intelligence is being insulted, and fast forward thirty years later, and we have zombies outside the ring. Now I understand the whole like trying to make it kid friendly thing, but like mm-hmm. holy shit, like really, like poor da- poor Damian Priest is. I mean, I know it's nice, like, working with uh, Bad Bunny and all that stuff, but, like, he can't even get out of this gimmicky shit right now, which is terrible. Yeah, that was that was really bad, and he even had a, a Lumberjack match again on Monday, but the zombie thing, I'm just like, what are we doing here? Uh, like, what, what the hell are we really doing here? And then Miz at the end gets ate up by zombies, like, so how do you make him come back? Obviously, he got ate by zombies, so he's going to have to be gone for a long time. And Lord and behold, we find out that you share that he has a torn ACL now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, poor Miz. He's... Which is the first time he's been majorly injured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is really impressive when you think about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's it's really crazy to think about, too, that. This zombie thing happens, then we find out torn ACL. It's like, man, we're one of those zombie people a little too uh too rough on him, but now he's gonna be out and Damian Priest, like you said, Lord knows what he's gonna be doing going forward. But I just know that was extremely stupid. And they could have promoted Dave Batista's movie in another way. Yeah, they they certainly could have done it like uh the UFC did the night before and just say that uh, Army of the Dead three times every match. So, you know, they could have done it that way too, I guess. Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. And for what we're talking about, guys, uh, WWE Backlash was just this Sunday, and Jacob actually almost forgot Backlash was happening. <laughs> yeah, um, I was enjoying my lazy Sunday, mm-hmm. and my phone message popped up from you. And it was it said Rey Mysterio and his son won a title. And I went, what the, how'd they win a title? Oh, shit, there's a pay-per-view tonight. <laughs> well, I honestly feel like this one, I don't feel like there was that much, like, publish, uh, publishing, like, for it. Like, there wasn't that much, like, hey, publicity. Backlash is coming. And yeah, publicity, like, it was just like, oh, I remembered because I saw, like, on Twitter, like, hey, Backlash is today. Also, the name. It's WWE Backlash, which is terrible. And any real wrestling fan who calls it WWE Backlash needs to be banned because it is called Backlash. Ad- adding WrestleMania is so just terrible. But yeah, Ray and Dominic won the titles off Ziggler and uh, Robert Rude, first father son, to ever hold the tag team titles, which is kind of crazy because if you watch wrestling back in mid 2000s, Ray Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero were having ladder matches for custody papers of Dominic. <laughs> he was like five. And here he goes, twenty some years later. How Ray and uh, Dominic are champs. So that that was cool to see, and they got to uh, get to be on ESPN on Sports Nation. So, I mean, I thought that was really cool. But I mean, the real main thing about this whole pay per view was Cesaro versus Roman Reigns. Uh, Cesaro's first time wrestling. For the WWE Championship or Universal Championship, and it had a crazy set that Roman Reigns is like wrestled in like thirty something title matches, and Cesaro's zero. So 
Jacob, what did you think about that match? And what do you think going forward with that? Uh, I like the match. I, I was shocked that Roman went over clean, though. No help either. Yeah. No, right. no, it, it was it was clean as a whistle, which I wasn't expecting. I thought, you know, they'd swerve us with some so drama or whatnot. Uh, but it was a good match. It was certainly a, it was a very good match. Uh, going forward, um, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities happening here because are we going to see? Well, obviously, we're going to see Seth versus Cesaro again. Yeah, that's going to be a yeah. thing. Um, I know me and you were talking. I think it's going to end up coming down to Cesaro. It's SummerSlam. There's a couple different ways you could go about this. But this could be a, does Cesaro win money in the bank to mm-hmm. end up in the triple threat at SummerSlam or, you know, because I think, I don't know. I think we're going to end up seeing Seth go over on Cesaro. Cesaro wins the money in the bank uh, contract. And then Cesaro uses it SummerSlam to go over on those two. I don't know. There's a lot of different options here. I I, I will say, like, don't be surprised, you know, when we talk about the next pay-per-view where we're going to be like, Seth went over on Cesaro. I really think that's going to happen. Yeah, and they switched up the pay-per-view order because now in June we're getting Hell in a Cell, which is typically a uh, fall October pay-per-view rumor has it that they're doing that because july they're trying to really get fans for money in the bank so i would expect if they're trying to get fans for money in the bank that something big is going to happen so they want the fan pop and bizarro winning money in the bank would be a very big fan pop so man i I don't know what did you think about them moving hell in a cell to the summer i was really confused about it because at first when when they first addressed that I went, oh, what the hell? So why? Why? I didn't understand. Still, I mean, nothing's confirmed yet. But um, yeah, it, it was it was really weird because Hell in a Cell, that's, that's a fall thing. That's a yeah. Halloween-ish, Thanksgiving-ish type, Christmas-ish type deal thing. And I'm just like, oh, this is, it feels, it, it doesn't feel right to me. Yeah. But, you know, it is, it is what it is. We'll see. Um, them moving extreme rules to October. I think it's October they're going to have it. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's kind of it kind of makes sense because if you think last year they were doing like a bunch of like super gimmicky shit. So I mean, I can see them doing a bunch of Halloween stuff, which will be quote unquote oh. great for the kids. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that because even they can mess it up to make it great for the uh, for the kids. I know you had some issues with Backlash, how they did not even have the Intercontinental Championship up for that. And I think I just saw that they're doing a fatal four-way for the title on SmackDown, but they didn't defend it on the pay-per-view, which is like, what the hell? Yeah, that one, that was... All right, so you you have your backstage moment with... uh, Who else was it? Was it Adam Priest and... uh, What's her name? Sonya Deville. Adam Pearce and Sonya, yeah. That, that backstage moment, and they're like, oh, well, you'll defend Fatal 4-Way on SmackDown. I'm like, you're making this title look weak. You're making this title look absolutely weak, which, let's be honest, it is. It is yeah. a weak title. Yeah. It was it was doing something when you had uh, Big E have it, but mm-hmm. all in all, you have... Uh, what the hell's his name? Apollo Cruz mm-hmm. or Apollo yeah. or whatever it is this week with the terrible accent. You have, you know, it's not, it doesn't look strong with him or Captain Baba or whatever the hell that other guy's name is. General NZs or I, I don't know. These names are stupid. It's all bad. But regardless, you're taking this not. You're taking this weak title and making it look weaker. Why? It's your intercontinental title. This needs to be defended on every pay per view. That is the workhorse paper, the workhorse title. Mm-hmm. Make it, make it that. I. It's dumb. 
Like, I'm glad to see, like, oh, hey, title match on SmackDown, but at the same time, you're coming hot off a pay per view. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and it's not even in a one on one, it's a fatal four way, which I think the Intercontinental Championship has been reduced to having fatal four way, six man ladder matches just to get some buzz with it. And then also, speaking of SmackDown, random SmackDown, how Shayna and Nia lost the titles to Natty and Tamina. That was, I did not have that on my wrestling bingo board that day. That was out of the blue. I didn't have this on any of the bingo sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was still holding out for a uh, lot to take the titles. Oh, that is a. Uh, Dead in the water, by the way. I, I just don't see this happening anymore. But uh, what? Why? Why are we having? Why? I don't understand it. Why those two? Was anybody that behind them? Uh, they had some passion. They had some passionate promos, and I know I saw obviously on Twitter fellow wrestlers congratulating them. I think it was more congratulating to Mina because, you know, she's been in the company for a bit and this is her first title ever. And there's a reason for that. I'm I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I, I was more excited to see Natty get another title because I, I, I do like Natty. Mm-hmm. Um, but Tamina is absolute trash. <laughs> she's she's absolute garbage. She 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 can't do a promo. She can't wrestle to save her life. She's just there. She's just there because her because we all know who her father is. And family bloodline. But it's crazy in that family bloodline. She's the least accomplished. Like, she's not gotten any rub besides this title. This is That's crazy to think about from that family. I mean, I think I'm saying something. I mean, okay, realistic question. Is there anyone out of your friends group that you know who is a Tamina fan? No. Have you ever known anyone to be a Tamina fan? Like an actual, like, oh yeah, Tamina deserves the best. Like, do you know anyone? No. Yeah, there's a reason for it. Nobody likes Tamina. Literally nobody. Nobody. I don't know. I don't know why Vince has kept her for so long. Hey, man, he keeps the people related to bloodlines that help the company. You know this. But how is she ever helping? She's another body, and she's, I mean, that's all I can think. She's a bigger body that if someone beats her, they're just like, oh, my gosh, they just beat the giant Tamina. Tamina is one of those people that just gets, like, relevant maybe, maybe once every two years. Has that, like, oh, hey, it's Tamina. Oh, goodbye, Tamina. And that's it. I, I, I don't. It's dumb. Those titles look weak also. Not a fan. Yeah, and it's yeah, and it was on SmackDown, like a random SmackDown. If you were gonna have them lose the title, you should have just did it at WrestleMania. And then uh Natty and Tamina were on Bra and they were in some thing with Alexa Bliss. So I don't know if Alexa, we don't even we don't know what she's been doing, but we don't know if she wants the title, but she doesn't have a partner, but we'll uh we'll wait to see on that we're going to come back to wwe later but let's switch it back to aew because we haven't talked about them in a bit and um everyone knows i love lana she does have a husband who used to be known as rusev now mirio he just won a title didn't he jacob yes sir he is the new tnt television champion which is pretty freaking cool yeah I, um i I was really glad to see him win that. I mean, finally, we're going to see, you know, Rusev, uh, Miro. We're we're finally going to see what he can do with the title because the last title he had was a lot. Did he have the tag titles in WWE? I'm trying to remember who his tag partner was even. His tag partner was uh, Aiden English. Oh, Back in Rusev's day. I don't a, think they ever had the titles. No, because they broke up because Aiden English, I remember what happened in Milwaukee, talking about Lana cheating on Rusev with him. But, Jesus, uh, <laughs> the storylines that man was going through, and obviously the last one we saw him 
with the whole Liv Morgan, Bobby Lashley situation, but no, I don't think he ever held those uh, titles. Yeah, so I can't remember the last title Rusev has had since the United States title. Well, I did have an intercontinental one in between, I believe. It wasn't memorable, then, because, yeah. no. His, his run with that U.S. title was amazing. And, if you know, the IC title run, I don't it, – it obviously didn't mean shit. <laughs> so, I, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with him now. I think – I mean, we all were excited to see Rusev go to AEW. So, I, I don't know. If – I thought they. I thought the way he came in was not great, being the the best man and whatever that stupid storyline was, because it was dumb. It was really mm-hmm. dumb. But he's on his own now. He's that. He's a heel, and he's got a title. That should be good. I yeah. You know. Cody Rhodes called um, Mario the most dominant heavyweight champ in wrestling right now. Do you agree with that? No. <laughs> no, not, not even close. He's I, had it a week. I know, but I guess Cody was gassing him up and I, I just saw that. I was like, wow, I don't know. I don't know if the tribal chief would agree with that, but <laughs> hey. I mean, he's not even the most dominant guy in AEW. <laughs> I know. No, I don't know what Cody was saying with that, but hey, that's him. But speaking of AEW, I want to ask this now because obviously they had their uh, blood and guts match a couple uh, weeks back, and a lot of people from WWE's exact thing is like, "Oh, this match set wrestling back thirty years." But then when they had the zombie match, Chris Jericho had the tweet because you know he's always talking. Oh my gosh, that zombie match sent wrestling back thirty years. In your opinion, what really, which one do you think set wrestling back? The blood and guts one or the zombie one? I don't think either match set the wrestling world back 30 years. I mean, it, listen, I, sip your own coffee and just calm down there, boys. Like, you're, it was, the zombie match was, was stupid because zombies. And I know a lot of people were mad about the blood and guts being like because of the ending with Jericho and he fell onto the, Crash pass. But at the same time, people will freak out like all oh, people were unsafe if they land on concrete or something. Wrestling fans are some of the most, and we're 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 one of them, so I'll gladly talk shit about ourselves here. Some of the most like pickiest, what's the word here? Flip floppity fan bases. Fan bases on the planet where this is terrible, and then they'll do something to fix it. And be like, that looks stupid. Well, like, what do you want? You want your wrestlers to be safe. Chris Jericho broke his arm. So even through the crash mats, the dude's broke his arm. So whatever. Like, I could care less. I thought the zombie match was way stupider because I feel like it just insulted our intelligence way worse. How about you? Yeah, that zombie match was tough because it's like, come on, man. If zombies eat the Miz, that means he can never come back to wrestling because he's dead. But... Blood and guts, even though I mean that was that was blood and guts. I mean, for some that definitely was not for kids, but I don't think it's set the wrestling world back. Honestly, sometimes uh you sometimes you need a little color, as the as the old heads would say, just to really put the point across. Just think about it. Even though it was on an accident, that color when Becky Lynch had everyone knows the signature pose, when she was on that uh with the stand on the fans. And she had the blood coming down her face after Nia punched her. And she's that made Becky Lynch. That I don't think Becky Lynch is the man without that blood. Because it wouldn't be the same impact. I agree. 100%. I mean, sometimes you need it, man. Like, or Stone Cold with Hart at WrestleMania with the blood coming down his face. Like, that made Stone Cold. Like, sometimes you really need it. Like, if you want to talk about insulting intelligence, you're telling me these people are punching and kicking and slamming each other and not once blood's going to come out? Like, come on, man. Someone's going to get cut. Someone's going to get decked. That blood's coming out. So, obviously, that wasn't really for the kids, but the 
that zombie thing that was bad like i sat there and i was like i can't believe this is a real match like what the hell are we doing and then i want to say with aew because they're already announcing that they're going to start touring again soon and like going to live events so i think about june july and like how much pressure now is on other wrestling promotions to like figure out that they need to get back out there don't you think if aew is going to be out there first yeah, I, I think it puts, well, I mean, all right, so basically this is putting pressure on Ring of Honor. This is putting pressure on Impact. I don't think this is putting any pressure on WWE, mm-hmm. in my opinion, because honestly, any pressure AEW is putting on WWE, Vince is putting like triple that because Vince wants to make that money. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, that is whatever, but it's looking good for wrestling fans. Like, we're starting to finally, like, the world is curing. We're fi- nature is finally coming back, or everything's going back to this natural way, or whatever the hell people were saying last year. But I mean, like, even like locally, I'm finally getting a, we're finally getting uh, the one local promotion is oh. finally having a, uh, they're finally having a, a show. They haven't had that since last year. So, like, I'm 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 really excited about uh, seeing these places finally going and doing stuff. And you're going to see it at all these. And I think the UFC and I think the Super Bowl and I think WrestleMania really put a president out there for a lot of these states and stuff. Where I think a lot of these states are going to open up stuff because we'll see all these other states getting all this money. And then I'll be like, I want some of that money. And so you're going to see, I think, more and more people opening up. I mean, not to get political or whatnot. Yeah. No, man, I'm, I'm really excited for this because when um, I checked my, because I was down vacationing with my wife, and I was like, when's the last time I used an Uber? And then I looked up my thing, and it was 2018 when we went to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view here in Columbus. And I'm like, I've not been to a live wrestling show since 2018. Like, what are we doing? Like, this is, I was on like a consistent going to everyone in Columbus every Monday or pay per view. And I'm like, what the hell are we doing here? So, whenever tickets get sold, like, hey, we're Raw or SmackDown, I'll be right there. Because again, even though there are times where the product is absolute trash on TV, being at a wrestling event live, big or small, and getting that energy, there's really not that much like it, in my opinion. Oh, I agree. And what I love about going to, especially a WWE show, is the vast amount of people of different backgrounds and mm-hmm. just different humans that will be sitting right next to each other and everyone's cheering, booing, you know, doing whatever. Like, I remember going to a show down, at, down in Columbus. Um, and seeing some 400 pound dude sit next to this absolute smoke show, sitting next to this dude, like a couple dudes in a business suit who obviously just came from work and got free tickets. But everyone's cheering, everyone's having such a good time. It is such the quote, you know, the rock here. It's electric. It really is. And I don't care if you're at the uh, WWE show or a little indie show. Man, I mean, I've been to a lot of indie shows and had a ton of fun. I mean, it's it's all good. It's always a good time. Yeah, and even to like to relate it to other people, let's just say like great relating wrestling to like anime or comics. A, a wrestling event is its very own like Comic Con or like an expo because you see everyone coming in there, wrestling shirts, wrestling gear, their belts. That's the only time you're allowed to have something that big in gold go through security with those belts, like you <laughs> like decked out and like you're like you said, man. No one knows anything about each other except you love this stuff. And like the events that I've been through is just crazy. Obviously, for people who know Cena's my favorite guy, and to be in the middle of an when I saw Cena and Owens at Money in the Bank and in between to be in the sitting right in the middle of one side going to Let's Go Cena, Cena sucks. Mm-hmm. You're just turning back and forth. You're just like, this is what wrestling's all about. Like, I don't know any of these freaking oh, yeah. people. I'll never see them again, probably, unless like 
unless they come again to an event and we're all decked in wrestling gear and no one's getting made fun of because shit, if you come not in wrestling gear, they're like, why are you here? <laughs> like, get a wrestling shirt on. Facts. So I'm going to say this. If you bring a title to a WWE show as a fan, you have to defend that Amen. belt. Amen. Quit bringing Amen. your belts and not defending it, you sons of bitches. I 100% agree. Uh, there was something sticking with Cody Rhodes that you brought up that I feel like is a super good topic. If you want to talk about like the Cody Charlotte Flair, like double standard, you brought up, man, like, like you should really hit on this. This was really good stuff. You sharing it with me. All right. So basically the, I seen someone post online. It said, why, why is there a double standard or what, what is the difference between Charlotte Flair uh, basically riding, you know, her daddy's coattails and Cody Rhodes, essentially Cody's very open about it. Mm-hmm. I am my father's son. You know, I'm the son of a son of a plumber. Um, what, why is there such a double standard basically between Charlotte Flair and Cody Rhodes, both children of uber famous wrestlers. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that it had a lot of comments, you know, and I had to sit back and even think about that. Cause I'm like, yeah, I can't stand Charlotte. I'm not a Charlotte fan. I'm a massive Cody Rhodes fan though. Mm-hmm. Massive mark for him. And it's like, okay, well, why is this? I, there, I've seen a bunch of different answers for me personally. Well, actually, no. Let's start with you. Let's go with you. What's your take on this, buddy? Yeah, I'm looking at the tweet right now that you shared um, with me back. This was May uh, 14th. And I had to really sit back and think because I, I know what I said initially is like, well, Cody Rhodes had zero world titles in WWE. Zero. And Carla Flair already has the most in women's history. and. We're on record saying that she's going to have the most of all time, men and women, by the time this is all. So that's already saying something. And I I think it didn't help Charlotte at the beginning, too, because her father was always there. If you remember one of her first NXT take, I think, was it NXT TakeOver? I forget which one, where you had her and Rick and then Hart and Natty. And, like, they were the men were in the corner and they were going. I was like, eh. And they kept pushing, like, Charlotte Flair, this is Rick Flair's daughter. He's had a whole bunch of storylines with him. Her most recent one outside of this was with him. And it still would have been going on if Lacey Evans didn't get pregnant. So it's like every time they find a way to insert Rick, they do, which I do not like. And when we're talking about stories that I didn't like, if you remember a Charlotte storyline with Paige, where God knows who approved this nonsense, where Paige brings up uh Charlotte's dead brother who committed suicide. I'm like, who the, who the hell wrote this? But Cody, you always saw him in like in WWE as a workhorse guy, uh, part of Legacy, Intercontinental Championship. Like he never got to be the top person. Charlotte was literally the top person on her first pay per view in WWE. She came in, ended Nikki's reign, hasn't looked back. Since. But it's interesting with her because there are other family people in wrestling. I mean, obviously there's Randy Orton, but he's never like he had one thing with his dad, but his, but he's better than his dad. So it's like, OK, and he's more famous than his dad. Obviously, The Rock and The, the Rock is significantly more famous than his dad. And like that family line, he's the most famous person there. But The Rock has opened the doors for, I want to talk about people we don't like, Roman Reigns, Tamina, Nia <laughs> Jax. We do like the Usos, but look at all those people. His daughter, shoot, I think the only reason Eva Marie's back is because Rock called Vince is like, hey, take Eva back. She's part of my seven bucks production line or whatever the hell it is. But <laughs> it, it's tough, man. Maybe. I don't want to say because Charlotte's a woman. I really don't think that. It's just really the fact that 
Charlotte does get handed a whole bunch of stuff, and she's really good. Like, I'm not debating that she's not good. It's just, I do think this tweet does have a point because Cody will openly say, Yeah, I'm building my dad's legacy, but Charlotte now recently is like, and I know you've seen it. I don't want to ride my dad's coattails, and then you just go off on that. But it's tough because there's a lot of there's a lot of wrestlers if they weren't related to other people, they would not be in any wrestling business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me personally, I just look at if you just break down just the WWE careers of Cody and Charlotte, Charlotte, maybe she's just gotten shoved down her throats. Whether that's her fault, Vince's fault, anyone's fault, Ric Flair's fault, I don't know. All I know is I don't like it. I know a ton of people who don't like it. I think you have one friend who's like, oh, hell, the- wait, which, which one is the queen fam? Justin. Justin, that's right. All right, so Justin's the only one. You know, shout out to Justin. And he's a man because I don't <laughs> I, I don't want him just screw the wrestling podcast. Um, so Justin's the only person I know who likes Charlotte. Other than that, I don't know anyone who likes Charlotte. Look at Cody though. Cody did not get handed everything. Yeah. Actually, Cody got shit on. Mm-hmm. Stardust. I'm Stardust. I mean, Cody was white hot. Remember when? Cody had the mustache, and him and Sandow were the road scholars. They were white hot, mm-hmm. and they would have been tag team champions. I think they should have been, honestly. But it's hard to compete with Team Hell now at that time. Mm-hmm. So, but okay, that's fine and dandy. But you see Cody get shit on, ask for his release, and then goes to the Indies, absolutely kills it, just kills the Indies. And then him, the Young Bucks, and uh, Kenny Omega start AEW. Mm-hmm. Man, like, you can say what you want, but your daddy, but if you're going to ride your dad's coattails, you can only ride them so far. Mm-hmm. I think Cody has been able to find that sweet spot of, I am my father's son. I, you know, long live Dusty Rhodes. And but I am Cody Rhodes. I am my own man. I have formed my own thing. I'm doing my own thing mm-hmm. all while representing my family in the best light possible. Charlotte has not found that. Charlotte has either been full blown. I'm Ric Flair's daughter or I hate Ric Flair. Yeah. There hasn't been a, I'm just Charlotte Flair. I mean, maybe things will change with this whole like, I'm the opportunity now or whatever the hell her dumbass is doing. Um, but I, I, she needs to find that sweet spot. And until she does, there's always going to be the quote unquote double standard for her. And I mean, I don't think it's that much of a double standard. Honestly. But that's just me. Yeah. It's crazy too with Charlotte, because obviously, I mean, at, at this current time, her dad is the person tied with the most titles in history, in WWE history, along with um, John. So the fact that, and like all these other people, they've eclipsed their, the top ones have eclipsed their parents, maybe except for Cody. I don't know if you could say Cody's eclipsed Dusty just yet, but but the stuff he's doing, obviously getting AW off the ground is on his way. But Dusty was instrumental in like doing NXT stuff. But Charlotte, I mean, right now you it's it's just crazy because you can people you can make the argument that she's a better wrestler than her dad. You really, if you really, really wanted to go that deep end, if you really wanted to, she's more athletic than her dad. I mean, because you gotta think Rick was not the most athletic dude. But I'm just saying, if you really wanted to go that route, because some people, I'm not saying she is, but some people have said that she is better than her dad and you know fine athletic wise i'll give i'll give you that athletic wise better as a wrestler though no and no. she's certainly not as pretty as rick flair i'll just say that right now. well I rick flair is a beautiful I, man and I don't, I don't know the relationship between like charlotte and randy orton but i think she should be asking randy for like advice like how do you like really separate yourself 
from your people, like from your parents. Like, because you forget that Randy's like a third generation superstar. Like, you really freaking do. You know what? I you know what else? Honestly, though, I feel like Cowboy Bob Orton, who was his dad, was nowhere near as popular as Randy Orton was. Though, oh no, he was never that. He was never a main event star. I feel like, if I remember correctly, Cowboy Bob Orton was he was a mid card, pretty much mm-hmm. his whole career. And I forget who who was his grandpa. Um, I'm forgetting who is something Orton too. I'm trying to think too. And then obviously, since Roman is not The Rock's son or brother, he's cousins. And they don't bring that up. They only bring it up when they want to. So (laughs) it's like, but with the ooze, like every time they're like, well, you don't own the family ooze. I'm like, okay, well, where's The Rock at? But it's like, there's another person who he's formed his own thing. And so, you know, the match we said this happened like three years, Rock and Roman collide. But oh man, she, you like you said, she needs to find that sweet spot because she's never just been like, I'm here to just, I'm here to win. I'm here to be the best. F my last name. But like you said, some of her prolific storylines, her dad's with her the whole way. The other ones, her and her dad are the main feud. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because I'm thinking about this, about my last comment. Is it because Ric Flair was such a uber mega star? That like his only real rival, like when it comes to popularity, was Hulk Hogan, in my opinion. Like, his, I mean, Dusty Rhodes was popular, but the two top stars at that time were Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. Is it because Ric Flair Flair was so top star popular, and Charlotte Flair is so top star popular, where everyone else was either a mid carder or stayed a mid card or? you know surpass their parents or whatnot because i mean when you start thinking i mean i'm thinking about all these other wrestlers who are second gen third gen wrestlers i mean you can even take girl as a destiny from uh new japan their dad is haku Mm -hmm. but yet nobody's comparing them you know to haku i mean even haku was part of the faces of fear and girl is destiny's a tag team so i mean but you don't see that comparison either. I don't know. What do you think? I think, man, the only way to really see this going forward is if you think, is to see what Simone Johnson gets, Rock's daughter. Because if it's because you want to talk about popular, then your dad's The Rock. <laughs> like, shoot, by the time you're wrestling, with all this stuff, if he's really bored, your dad might be president by the time you're actually wrestling. So that like that's gonna be interesting because then we're gonna be like, if she starts winning titles, we're gonna be like, this is Charlotte Flair all over again. Well, it, it, it should work out because you know it'll end up being the Rock's daughter versus Rick uh Charlotte Flair, and Rock's daughter will retire Charlotte. Well, when she- when Charlotte's a 30 time champion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna fill that void. Boom. Simone or whatever he said her name was. 30 time champion. I, I really feel like she would I think she's actually gonna hit like 25. I really do. Oh yeah, for sure. Which is uh crazy. And did you say did you talk about um Kevin Kenny Omega potentially going against Andrade? Oh, it's it's not potentially. It is not happening. So oh, confirmed. Okay. Yeah, at uh, Triple Mania, tri- Triple A Mania. How I don't know. It's they're uh, the biggest promotion in Mexico. So WWE in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting Andrade versus Kenny Omega for the Triple A Lucha Libre title, whatever it's called. I don't know too much about it, but I do know it's going to be a hell of a match. Yeah, we were talking about Flair, and now we're talking about her fiance, Mr. Andrade. <laughs> I, I still can't believe, man, that he's gone, especially being who he's engaged to. But yeah, that's going to be a hell of a match. Like, that's going to be really good. I see Andrade. Kenny Omega does not, he's not built enough to be carrying like 50 belts. <laughs> the dude carries. I can see, you know what? No, I can see it. And you want to know why I can see it? 
because Austin Aries was the belt collector at one point, and he, he had like I don't know twenty some belts. If Austin Aries can do it, and he pissed off every company ever. Yes, he did. No one is pissed off anyone like him. I I don't know who's I don't know who's pissed off more companies, Austin Aries or Tessa Blanchard. Oh, <laughs> that's oh man, that's God. Now I don't know because. Here we go again. Let's just talk. Why is she? Or here we go. Week 500. Tessa Blanchard is still not signed. Like, <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I, I'm going to say Austin right now, but if Tessa's not signed by like SummerSlam, I might have to switch Tessa because there's no re. She's so good. And that means she must have really like been bad in the back and no one wants to take her. And what's crazy is is apparently she's done some terrible things, but no one's come out to officially confirm what all she's done. All we know is she has pissed people off, and that's apparent because she's not signed. Yeah, I mean, we might have to switch from the going in on Lana every two weeks to, man, we have to do Tesla watches. Like, <laughs> we're going to have to start doing Tesla watches because AEW needs her. Like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, AEW's going to be getting a couple new people here in, I don't know, 90, 60 days. Yep, they'll be getting a couple, they'll be getting Billy and uh, Peyton. Peyton. Yep. Yep. They'll be getting them. They will be, they'll be getting Chelsea Green too. Yep. Sure. Well, well she wants to do Playboy apparently. Well, she can do that at AEW. There's no third party bands over there. Remember, we oh, talked about that was supported. They will, because remember when they when the WWE dropped that third party band, AEW's like, remember, you can wrestle and Twitch here. And they were <laughs> promoting their Twitch gamer tag. So I, I, oh man, that's gonna be yeah, Tessa. I, I don't know, but Andrade and Kenny, that's gonna be that's gonna be a really good match. Also, you shared some news with me today about Ricochet throwing some shade a little bit, but I don't really think it was shade. But some people I don't think it was shade either. I think people are being a little soft around here on this one. A little, little soft? A, li- a little soft, but basically Ricochet said no one can do what he does as a high flyer. People brought up Io Shirai. Ricochet, praise her, but still say he's a better high flyer. Don't know why people got mad. I really don't. One, it's his opinion. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Two, I mean, I, the first match Ricochet I ever saw was that Ricochet Osprey match. <laughs> so, which I, I didn't, I was gymnastics and ballerina and wrestling and all that in one. So, I, I agree. I think he's a better high flyer than EO. And the best high, one of the best high flyers right now is just obviously. He's just not getting any shine in WWE. What do you think? Oh, um, I, I don't know why people are upset with Ricochet. It makes no sense. Ricochet is 10 times a better high flyer than Io Shirai. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, let's just be honest. And me and my wife were talking about this because this is what I said to you. Me and my wife were in the car. And, uh, we are talking about that, and I'm going to go out and throw out a question here. Is Io Shirai the best women's high flyer on all of WWE right now? I think so. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not thinking of anyone who, I know Flair has her moonsault, but I think so. <laughs> I said the exact same thing. I'm like, but Charlotte Flair has the best damn moonsault. I'll give her that. <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm going to I'm going to say she's not. Who do you think it is? Bianca Belair. Uh, Bianca, yeah. She can do a 450. Yeah, yeah. That girl can do anything. She puts that, her mind to. She's that freaking good. Uh, you just don't... You, I forget, because you really don't think of her as a high point. You think of her as like a power. She's strong, obviously. Part of her gimmick. But... That's true. She is. She's probably the most athletic person on the roster. 
And I'm not trying to take shots at Io Shirai. I mean, I know she's an avid listener of the L7C Wrestling Podcast. But uh, in all actuality, Io Shirai throws a cross body pretty much. Yeah. And honestly, if Kyrie Sane was still there, I'd say she's better than Io Shirai. Kyrie, I would agree. I think Kyrie because was Kyrie, the, yeah. the meanest yeah. elbow off the top rope ever. She, I think her elbow is better than Randy Savage's. I'm just throwing it out there. Ooh, ooh, made some controversy. Oh yeah, we're throwing hot takes all day. Let's go. <laughs> Kissing some, off everybody. Getting some controversy. I mean, yeah, I, Kyrie Zane, she was sweet. She, she was something special. Like. Ah oh, man, but yeah, Bianca. I I would. I'm not wrong. I'm not mad about that answer about her being the best high flyer. I didn't even think of her as a high flyer. I was just thinking of Charlotte's moon song. Yeah, because I started thinking like there's not too many women that go off the top rope, and then like once they started think, shit, you know who else? Ember Moon. Ember, yeah, Ember Moon. That's a good one. I mean. Once again, I'm not trying to throw, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to throw shade at Io Shirai, but honestly, I think you could easily make that argument for Bianca Belair or make the argument for Ember Moon as the best women's high flyer. Those are good ones. You don't even think of them as high flyers. No. You know what we need? We need WWE to make like a top 50 women's high flyer list. No, we don't. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> they should be banned from making lists. And I'm serious. <laughs> like, you, you know, you... Oh, okay, then. I can't wait. Well, no, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to, since they did top 50 women's, I need to see the top 50 men's. Like, that's the one I need to see because that, I know it's going to piss people off. Oof. Oof. And I mean, yeah. And if you want to pick one of those slow weeks that we have, maybe leading up to like SummerSlam, if we want to try and do it, I mean, we can. But when WWE makes theirs and Triple H is like number two, (laughs) and I like Triple H, but he ain't number two. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if we want because that's a that is a very controversial topic. I mean, I'm all about it. I'll definitely do it. But if we if we get to one of these slow weeks, like if we can get Justin and get Byron, hey mm-hmm. guys, pick your top top twenty Men male wrestlers of all time. Of all time. Oof. That would uh that it's not a bad idea for future podcasting here. It's not, but that that one, it would have to be we only talk about that list of that because that would get hot. It, 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 like I thought the women would hit and the women did piss <laughs> it off. But the men, I'm telling you, in WWE, they'll put Triple H at three. I know they will. Where does if they're putting Triple H at three, where does Vince McMahon line up in top 50? Because he has to be on this list. I'm trying It'd be to great think. if they just put him at number one. I'd actually be okay with it. I'm trying to think. They had Stephanie on the women's in the 20s, which I don't even agree with with that. And Vince McMahon was a terrible wrestler, but unfortunately he was a champion. They probably, well, if he's making the list, he'll probably put himself in top 10. But <laughs> they'll probably put him in like the 20s, low 20s, early 30s. I, like I said, I wish they'd put him at number one just because it would just piss off everybody, and I would just love it. Like, I'm just, it'd be crazy, man, because, like, now we're on this and Like, where do you put, where would WWE put Punk? Where would mm. WWE put Brock? God damn, where would WWE put John or Randy? Or like savage and like ultimate, like oh my goodness, Hogan. Where do you put where do you put Bruno San Martino? I think they would put him in the top ten, and I mean I would get if people would push back because well us we didn't see him wrestle except for like tapes, but the dude was basically champion for like an entire decade. But I honestly think WWE would probably put Hogan. No, they put Hogan or Austin one and two. I I believe they would do that. Yeah, I mean, it, 
And whoever's won, number two fans are going to get pissed. <laughs> if, if, if they would put Hogan number one and Austin number two, it would be a lot more pushback than if it was flip flopped. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. the world still hates Hulk Hogan right now. Oh, we saw so. that at WrestleMania. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I, I would definitely be down for something like that eventually. Where would they put Sean? Oh, my goodness. Daniel Bryan, Sean. Like, uh, Jericho. Like, they would put something stupid, too. They put, like, Razor Ramon in the top 12. Oh, yeah. All those click guys. They'd have X-Pac in the top 20. Kevin Nash would be in the top six, and I probably would just not record for like a month. <laughs> he well, we have to. We'd have to record that. I, We'd have to. Dude, I, yeah. Any, anyone listening, think of who you would think would be in the top 20 WWE men's of all time list. If they were making it, then think of your own. And if you guys are really digging that type of thing, let us know, and we'll try and get uh, Justin and Byron on and give us some time when we have one of these slow weeks. But, I mean, the time that it gets us coming, Sam, sometimes it is slow, unless Money in the Bank has fans, and now I'll be picking some stuff up. But let us know, because I would need some time to actually, like, sit and think about it long and hard. Ooh. Oh, for sure. You're talking about Bruno. What about what about like a Bob Backlund? Like like uh, Oh, Bruno would have to go above Bob Backlund. Yeah. He would, you put but then you have Flair, which is we're talking about Flair. You have Flair, you have Dusty Rhodes. I mean right, Piper. Right, Piper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh God. Now this all I'm gonna be thinking about, so <laughs> But is there anything else you want to hit on before we uh, sign off today? I'm trying to think because honestly, like nothing crazy happened really since our last podcast. Because normally, like you saw the last one, something always happens crazy the following day. Yeah, and nothing insane has happened. Minus we had a lackluster pay per view with zombies, and that was pretty pretty much it. Honestly, like it's it's been kind of slow, and. I don't know. Uh, NXT has pulled less, has been pulling less uh, viewers than they did on Wednesdays. Which is kind of crazy because they're going to direct competition with AEW, but people are like, oh, well, NXT is on Tuesday. Whatever. But I mean, hopefully that. But I feel like it's, I feel like it's that time of year, though. Oh, yeah. Things are always slow because normally we're, we're dealing with extreme roles, which is always a trash pay per view anymore. So. Oh, yeah. The last time I cared about a Extreme Rules, and you might have been there, was uh, when it was... God, it was Alberto Del Rio, Dolph Ziggler, and Jack Swagger. Wow, that's and a they had, I, Yeah, this is a throwback, but they had a match in Columbus. It was Zeb Coulter... Uh, Big E and uh, who was the guy who announced Alberto Del Rio? Uh, Ricardo? Was it Ricardo? Ricardo Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. It was a triple threat like ladder match, and whoever won the stipu- whoever won can pick the stipulation for the match. And seeing Zeb Coulter wrestle Big E and uh, Ricardo was like the best thing ever. That was wild. I would say there's one thing that Jimmy Uso is back and not going to lie. I'm liking Jimmy Uso because he told Tribal Chief, you ain't going to talk to me in any certain type of way. And I said, oh, yeah. And you know what's crazy? Got a shirt. That says nobody's bitch. You have to be on Fox. I was thinking, I was like, there's no way that shirt would be on USA. Nothing blocked out either. Like, it's a black shirt, white letters, nobody's bitch. Like, and WWE selling that shit, too. I was like, Man, if I buy that, where the hell would I wear it? <laughs> and if you want that, if you want that shirt, get it now because he's about to be Roman's bitch. Let's be honest. <laughs> get it fast. It's not going to be on for long. 
but but yeah, other than that, there's nothing else I can think of. How about you? No, there's there's really nothing I can um think of. We did um we did have a wrestling passing though this past uh week. We That's did. True. Oh man, I'm blanking on his name. Please, uh, New Jack. New Jack, yeah, and I know, and uh, Paul Heyman obviously did pay his respect on uh, SmackDown talk. So we did have a wrestling passage, um, and it's crazy because, which this got you super hot about the uh, Hall of Fame. We already hit the one year anniversary of uh, Shad passing away uh, when he saved his son, which is crazy to think about how we were talking about this literally at this time last year. Mm-hmm. Flies and WWE better do justice by him before the L7C really starts coming down their throat. So, yeah, I mean, that's really that's really it. John Cena's talking about he wants to come back. I'm like, shoot, someone needs to beat the Tribal Chief because ain't nobody beating him. I don't think I don't think there's a full time talent who's beating Roman Reigns. And I know that pains. Byron, the captain, but I really do not think there's a full-time talent who's going to beat that man. There's not. I mean, I, we've said it. He's not losing that title till The Rock comes back. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. even then, he's going to lose it. By, by then, they're going to have someone else build up to take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. That, that's how it's going to work. Accept it and move on. Acknowledge Wait. your tribal chief for another year and a half. And when I when he does go down, that pop might be one of the loudest pops we've ever heard. They're doing long term story uh, writing on this, which is fine. Which, I mean, which, it is what it is. At least he's heel. If he was face, I'd be more pissed off. But he's heel. I'll take it. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, with that being said, shoot. I mean, thank you everyone for listening to L Seven C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Thank you, Jacob. For being on, sorry that backlash was not the greatest for everybody, but uh, we're, we're gearing. I'm I'm personally trying to get to money in the bank, um, for WWE wise, and because I feel like whoever wins that briefcase, boy or girl, is going to be monumental. Um, as long as Charlotte does not win the briefcase, so because then we know, and that'll be another championship. And I'm I'm gonna say it on every podcast, just in case a WWE person listens. If you're counting Charlotte's NXT titles into her title reign, count it for freaking everybody. Please, Lord Jesus, make it fair. It makes no sense. <laughs> like, I'm just like, Charlotte, where are you getting these numbers from? I have the wiki right here. <laughs> God. Like that, that's why that's why people can't take the announcement serious. It's like, so she's 13, 11 and 2, but. Oh. Oh. Announcing. Pat McAfee's the man. He's doing well. He's doing He's well. doing great. Shout out, Pat. Don't know how much they're paying him, but as long as he wasn't someone who took away someone's job, I would be okay with him. If he'd take away Tamina's job, I'd be okay with it. Well, that ain't happening. Eve already, <laughs> took, Eve already took away all the ladies' jobs and you know, the evolution. Man, wait till that wait till her first match. We might not talk about anything else but that match. He was going to be a big talking point when she debuts. <laughs> That's the truth, brother. But again, thank you everyone for listening to L7C Podcast. Thank you, Jacob, for being on. We'll be back in two weeks talking some more wrestling. And you know the story with the L7C. Whenever this episode goes out, the next day something crazy happens. So be on the lookout in the wrestling world. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.